baseball fans and White Sox fans and sports fans everywhere. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm recapping a very short week for the White Sox because this was All-Star Week and there was an All-Star game, you might have heard, in the middle of the week, which did have some White Sox on it. But, I digress. We, uh need to talk about their week. So the week started on Sunday, July 11th with the game against the Orioles. This uh, saw Cease go up against Watkins and the White Sox came into this game 53 and 35 and the White Sox ended up winning the game 7 to 5 in 10 innings. For the White Sox, Engel was 2 for 4 with a home run and 3 RBIs, and Vaughn was 2 for 4 with 2 home runs and 4 RBIs. For the Orioles, Mullins was 1 for 3 with an RBI, Hayes was 1 for 4 with a homer and 2 RBIs, and Mancini was 1 for 1 with a home run and 2 RBIs. Cease pitched 5, he allowed 2 hits and 2 earned runs. He did not get a decision, though, in that game. Hendricks got the win. He went one inning and allowed one run, which was not earned. And then Matt Foster got the save for two-thirds of an inning with no earned runs. And that was Foster's first save of the year. Uh, for the Orioles, Watkins went four and a third. He allowed four hits and one earned run. And Wells got the loss. He went two innings, allowed one hit and three earned runs. And with that, the White Sox improved to 54 and 35 going into the All-Star game. And they were 1-0 this week after that win. Then there was no game on the 12th, and there was a game on the 13th, which was the All-Star game, and the AL won that 5-2. It was the uh, American League's eighth consecutive win. And uh, Otani got the win with Corbin Burns of Milwaukee getting the loss. Hendricks, though, our man Hendricks, got the save, and he was not the only White Sox player on the team. He was also joined by Rodon and Lance Lynn and Tim Anderson, who was on the team replacing um, the uh, White Sox, uh, or the uh, Houston Astros uh, shortstop, um, I can't remember his name. All right, well, whatever. I mean, he was replacing him because he couldn't go. He was sick. Um, so, anyway, uh, then there was no game on the 14th and no game on the 15th. Then we have the series against those pesky Astros. Now, we come into the game. I, I'm sure White Sox fans know this that the um, White Sox do not have a winning record against teams that are good, teams that are winning their division, teams that have a very good record. So um, Korea, that's it. That's the shortstop, Korea. That's who Tim Anderson replaced. Now I remember his name. But anyway, uh, yeah, White Sox fans are very familiar with the fact that we don't have a winning record against teams that have a winning record. And uh, I guess that makes it really good that we have that we're in a division full of teams without a, a winning record except for the Indians, and they're eight games behind us, and they came into the second half eight games behind us. So we have a July 16th game, Astros at Chicago. This series was in Chicago, and this was uh, the first game of that series was McCullers versus Cease. The White Sox, of course, come in 54 and 35 and 1 and 0 on the week after having beaten the Orioles. In the top of the first, TA got a leadoff triple on the first pitch that he saw, and then Moncada drove TA home with a double on the first pitch he saw, and it was 1 0 White Sox, just like that. Abreu grounded out to third, no advance by Moncada, then Goodwin struck out, and then Vaughn popped out to Guriel. Uh, this game was uh, marred a little bit by rain at the beginning, but they did play it through. 
uh, cease one pop out five oh, yeah and cease um, had one pop out and five K's through the first two innings of the game then in the top of the third with two outs Maldonado walked El Tuve got an infield single Brantley was hit by a pitch. This is when the wheels really started to come off. There was a two-run double by Gurriel, and it was 2-1 Houston. And then Alvarez struck out. In the top of the fifth, Brantley jacked a solo homer with two outs, and it was 3-1 Houston. In the top of the sixth, Cease was relieved by Cody Hoyer, and after two outs with, or after two outs with two runners on. Top of the seventh, Bummer relieves Hoyer. Brantley singled and went to second on a wild pitch. Guriel walked. Then there was a wild pitch, put runners at second and third with two out. Tucker got an infield single and knocked in a run, and it was 4-1 Astros. Toro was hit by a pitch, and the bases were loaded. Ruiz was barred in to relieve Bummer. Ruiz allowed a bases-clearing double, and it was 7-1 Houston. That's how the game ended. And I stopped watching at that point, so it was convenient that that was the final score. The White Sox dropped to 54 and 36 with this loss and one and one on the week. But the Indians, at the same time, were playing Oakland, and they lost their first game against Oakland. So we move on to July 17th. The second game against Houston. Coming into this game, the Cleveland Indians have already beaten the Oakland A's 4-3. So for us to stay eight games up on Oakland, we had to beat Houston. And boy, did we. Um, yeah, this was, a, this was a great game. And also, right prior to this game, Lynn, Lance Lynn signed a two-year uh, extension, which gives him now a three-year contract for $30 million with the White Sox. So that was good news. We really needed that. Nice to hear. Bottom of the third, nothing happened for the first and second uh, innings. No score. Then in the bottom of the third, Zach Collins hits a one-out solo home run, and it's one nothing White Sox. Then Tim Anderson follows with a solo homer. Back-to-back -back jacks by the White Sox, and it's 2 nothing White Sox. That was their second back-to-back -back home run performance of the season. The other one was against the Kansas City Royals. Moncada walked on four pitches, and then Abreu walked. Then Goodwin was hit, or Goodwin hit into a ground ground ball fielder's choice, and it was runners at first and third with two out. But Garcia grounded back to or Odorizzi. And this was the, I forgot to mention that this pitching matchup was Odorizzi against Giolito. Bottom of the fourth, Sheets hits a one-out double um, off the left field wall. And then Berger doubles to left, scoring Sheets, and it's 3 nothing Sox. Then Collins walked. T.A. singled Berger home, and it's 4 nothing Sox. Odorizzi, got to bring my Sox logo back up. Um... T.A. single burger home, and yeah, like I said, and it's 4 nothing. Then Odorizzi was relieved by Brandon Bilek, and then Moncada struck out, and there was two down. Then Abreu was hit by a pitch, and the bases were loaded at this point. And then Goodwin lined out, but it was still 4 nothing Sox after four. Bottom of the fifth, Garcia walked, Vaughn popped out to left, Sheets hits a two-run homer, and it's 6 nothing White Sox. At this point, we're thinking we won the game. At least I was. Berger uh, got out, and then Collins struck out, and it was 6 nothing Sox after 5. Bottom of the 6th, Joe Smith is on in relief for Houston. T.A. doubles on the first pitch he sees. T.A.'s been doing a lot of that this year. He gets his, It seems like he gets, and especially leading off games, it seems like he leads off games with doubles and homers. Um, and then Moncada was safe on an infield single, and Anderson went to third. Abreu hits a three-run homer, and it's 9 nothing White Sox. 
Abreu ties Carlton Fisk for all time on the White Sox home run list at 214 with that home run. Bottom of the seventh, Austin Pruitt's on in relief for Joe Smith, and Jake Berger hits a one-out homer, and it's 10-0 White Sox, and that's Berger's first career Major League home run. And the White Sox ended up scoring runs in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh in this game. Top of the eighth, Toro gets a two-out home run to left, and it's 10-1 Sox, and that is how it ended. That was the only run that Houston got. And the White Sox went on to win, uh, well, win the game 10-1, and we go on to 55-36 uh, and 36 record and 2-1 and for the week. And Giolito got a complete game in a stellar performance for him. And uh, I, I guess this is going to have to maybe silence some of the people a little bit, a little bit, who uh, said we can't beat the good teams. I mean, we had a bad record against the good teams, but not all of those were bad losses. And right here, we just beat one of the best teams in the American League. And we crushed one of the best teams in the American League. So, and, and that's without Lewis Robert, that's without Eloy Jimenez, both of those guys will be coming back before the end of the season. So, you know, we have a losing record against really good teams, but we haven't played a lot of really good teams because the teams in our division mainly are not that good, except for Cleveland, and Cleveland's only marginally good. So... We haven't, you know, it's a small sample size, the times that we've played the good teams, and we've been playing all those teams with one arm tied behind our backs. So, I like where we are. I, you know, again, we, we're going to have a lot of games against our own division, and our own division is not very good. So, I think winning the division is, you know, that's a shoe in And, um, yeah, I mean, I, and I like our chances of... Uh, of going to the playoffs and then by the time we go to the playoffs we're going to have Eloy back we're going to have um, Grandall he's out right now we're going to have Grandall back and we're going to have uh, Lewis Robert back and if we have those all those guys back in our lineup and available that's good but it's also good that we have guys that we can keep bringing up from the minors and signing off the scrap heap who help us win games you know, like Goodwin and uh, Billy Hamilton and, and you know, Sheets. Sheets had a nice night, um, you know, in the, in the second Houston game. Um, so, you know, and Berger. If these guys keep performing, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it doesn't matter if we get Eloy and, and Robert back. It would be definitely be nice to have them back. But it is also nice to know that we have guys that we can reach back and grab that can help us get to where we need to be. So, with that, we stay eight games up on the Indians. And now we go into uh, this next week. Uh, Sunday will be the last game of the Houston series. And then I, uh, let's see, who do we play after that? I'm not sure. I think it's, De I want to say it's Detroit, but I'm not 100% sure. I think we play Detroit next. So, um, so, um, you know, uh, the challenges ahead are really, I'm going to be honest, not that steep for the White Sox. And I think we can meet whatever challenges we're going to run into. So, like I said, I like where we are. How's everybody feeling about this big win against a really good team in the American League? Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave a comment below. And, hey, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. It does not cost you anything. And uh, it really helps me out. But that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.